I've cracked my vertebrae in my back, bruised the lung, had concussions. Uh, I lost my father at a very young age, and I've had the heartaches of life. I don't say these things to tell you that my life is harder than yours at all, because I know that some of you life is just, it's difficult. But I say this to encourage you, that we can use these things to glorify God. When we have the opportunity to show people that rejoice, we rejoice in our weaknesses. So we have to do the best that we, we can to have an attitude and always praise and bring glory to God. We have to, they have to know that we rejoice knowing that the, my future is more bright than the current pain and heartache that we get into in this world. I don't know why bad things happen in this world. I do know that our, our pain is to promote an attitude of Christ that never gives up for his glory. So before we do that, I'd like to go to him in prayer. Dear God, we, we thank you for, for today. We know it wasn't guaranteed to us, but you saw fit for us tonight to be here. I ask that you be with me at this time, that I could speak your word in truth, Lord, that it won't be anything that would be against your will, God, that you be with me, Lord, that you could use me, Lord, that people might hear this and be encouraged. Lord, I want to thank you for sending your son, Lord, and, and forgiving us of our sins. Lord, we, we have debts, but Lord, you don't see us as sinners. You see us as praiseworthy and, and perfect beings, and we're grateful for that. Lord, I just ask that you uh, be with us at this time, be with our minds, and help us to concentrate on your word. We thank you and we love you, and you ask this in all things to your son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so I'd like to talk to you tonight about glorifying God in all we do putting him first in our, way, in our lives in a way that is noticeable to people around us, in a way that has an impact on people around us. One that says, you know, there's something different about that person. When you see that person, does he reflect Christ? Does he bring glory to, you, to him? One that has an impact on people around us that can lead them to Christ. You know, the, when they see us, that could really impact them. We are clearly instructed to bring glory to God in our, our daily lives. There are examples all over the Bible that tell us to do so. Even if there wasn't, don't we have plenty of reason to do so? Christ became man and bore the sins of the world, so we should have plenty of motivation to bring glory to him. In Isaiah 43, 7, we see that the Lord created us for his glory. Everyone that is called by my name, whom I have created for him for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I have made him. And in the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, Paul tells us that we are not our own, we are God's and then we are to bring glory to Him. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And in 1 Corinthians 10.31 also, the word tells us that even the small things matter. Whether therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. He mentions eating and drinking and how small these things are to us. We take it for granted. I mean, especially as Americans, you know, fast food and I don't know, we're, we're all a little bit too healthy at times, but um, we take these things for granted. And he says these small things, the things that don't mean anything to us, we're to use all things to glorify him. So clearly he looks for us to glorify him in all we do and is pleased when we do so. So how can we glorify the Lord? Well, I have an idea on a few things and I'd like to talk to you about those tonight. Another huge way and maybe one of the most important ways we can glorify Christ is through our attitude. Charles Swindle wrote these words about attitude. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on our life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than success, than what other people think, say, or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is that we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. I'm convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of attitudes. I love what he has to say here. No matter what the circumstances, God has given us this ability to choose our attitude in the process. Whatever it may be, whether it's a drought or a flood in the northeast or 
injuries or sickness, whatever it is, he's given us this ability. When I think of attitude, I think of Paul. We are him being in prison, being beaten, in hunger, in torture, shipwrecked, stranded in the sea, heartache, nakedness, sleeplessness. Listen how Paul reacts to this as soon as he gets some encouraging words from the Lord. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that, the Christ, that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. What an amazing attitude to boast in weakness. I know for me, it's, it's very difficult to, to even have a good attitude during weakness. But I think we can glorify Him when we do so. When we're in pain or sick, or when things are not going the way that we wish, it's hard for us to even acknowledge other people let alone have a good attitude. But as we see in Paul, he chose to rejoice in his weakness and his suffering, knowing that when people saw him smiling in spite of the pain, in spite of the suffering, that God would be glorified through his attitude. I know I've had a small dose of pain in my life compared to the Apostle Paul. I've broken my femur three times, my wrist four times, two collarbones, I've broken my arm, my thumb, my nose, a finger, a toe, teeth, I've cracked my vertebrae in my back, bruised the lung, had concussions. Uh, I lost my father at a very young age, and I've had the heartaches of life. I don't say these things to tell you that my life is harder than yours at all, because I know that some of you life is just, it's difficult. But I say this to encourage you, that we can use these things to glorify God. When we have the opportunity to show people that rejoice, we rejoice in our weaknesses. So we have to do the best that we, we can to have an attitude and always praise and bring glory to God. We have to, they have to know that we rejoice knowing that the, my future is more bright than the current pain and heartache that we get into in this world. I don't know why bad things happen in this world. I do know that our, our pain is to promote an attitude of Christ that never gives up.